Hey, welcome to all the Rain King membership uh, folks. And there's also a special welcome to all of you X and YouTube followers, as this is the free uh, monthly general market update. Good to have everybody aboard for this one on September 6, 2024. Okay, this video is again for educational purposes only. Lots of stuff to go over. We're going to look at the indices. NASDAQ corrections. We talked about this two weeks ago. We're going to do a little revisit touch on sentiment. Then I'm going to do a segment education on psychology within a base, we'll look at the leadership in the market currently, and then we will try to summarize. Okay, let's start with the indices. This is the S&P 500, cut this chart around 2 p.m. Eastern time. So we had this fast rally off the uh, August lows, and we were getting a nice digestion here um, for a couple of weeks, looked pretty good, but things have really um, cascaded this week. The digestion has fallen apart. We've broken through the 50-day. Obviously, the payroll report today was not well received. Um, so that's all kind of uh, triggered some more selling in the market. Now, the new highs and new lows, we still have net new highs on the S&P 500, which is good. Um, but you can see uh, plotted the uh, new lows. So you can see they are picking up as well. And the red dots mean they're over 50. So um, it's some deterioration in the last two weeks, even though the S&P was currently the strongest of the indices, the major indices. Now, the accumulation distribution also was weakening um, in the S&P. You can see we're just, just barely above one, which is accumulation. We're almost ready to go negative. Now, that's really partly due to the MAG-7. You know, the MAG-7 was uh, wonderful on the way up. It dragged up the indices and some of these high-tech components, NVIDIA and Apple, et cetera, but now they're all correcting. So it's dragging down um, certainly the NASDAQ, but it also is pulling down the S&P to a degree. So here is the NASDAQ. Again, 2 p.m. cut this chart. You know, we've had this correction in the NASDAQ. It was 15.9 to the August low. We had the rally, and then we uh, didn't know where we were going to go from there. And unfortunately, things got really ugly on Monday. So much so that I put out a special GMU update, um, giving people notice that you really needed to be much more defensive. The market was really starting to fall apart. So that was uh, timely for members of the membership. Now, you can see here that the payrolls report, again, has kind of spurred this selling. You know, the Fed um, certainly looks now like they're behind on uh, cutting interest rates. And the tell will really be in um, on September 18th, you know, Quarter point was kind of baked in. If they have to go to a, a 50 point cut or who knows, maybe it's bigger. Um, that's going to be a big tell that the, the Fed is um, way behind the curve. And uh, maybe the other shoe is going to drop that uh, there are real recession worries that the Fed is behind. So um, the market is not liking that. And it's reacting that way today. So here's the follow through day we had a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we now have broken the follow-through day lows. So that's just another negative um, in the market. And um, the other thing that got triggered on Monday was we had a distribution cluster. We had four distribution days in a rolling eight-day window. Um, last week, we had back-to-back, -back and we had a warning out saying, got to watch this closely, and um, things did not get better. And the cluster is really a warning sign that there's just a lot of distribution to, and it's probably going to weigh down the correction further. So it looks like we're going to go back and retest. So I've pulled up the Treasury bond. This is the 20-year bond. And um, what's interesting, if you look at this long chart, this is a couple of years long, um, you can see here that we've really, over the course of 2024, formed really a kind of a head and shoulders bottom, an inverted head and shoulders. And you can see that we're actually breaking out. Um, so bonds are breaking out. Yields are going to come down. Interest rates might come down, have to come down more aggressively. But if it's due to a recession coming, that's um, not a good mix. The blue uh, background is actually signaling that bonds are actually, the relative strength is actually increasing, which we haven't seen in a long, long time. Uh, we haven't seen that since a little blip back in uh, early 2023. So it looks like bonds... Um, are, are starting to lead here as the play. Now, interestingly enough, another piece of evidence is, you know, when we thought rate cuts were coming, we thought if they came in a controlled manner, that it would be very helpful to small caps and mid caps. 
um, smaller companies, growth companies. Now, you can see the reaction today is actually really, really poor in small caps and mid caps. And it's probably due to the fact that there are real recession worries, the jobs report shaking up the market, and there's been some other indicators. The ISM manufacturing has not been good either. So um, if we go into a recession, that's actually going to hurt some of these small and mid cap stocks. So it, it's definitely a change of character. Um, and it's going to be interesting what the Fed has to do on September 18th. So let's look at the revisit, put this in context. Um, we looked at the NASDAQ 10% uh, corrections a couple of weeks ago. So back on August 23rd, we used this slide here in the general market update. And we started to look back and we said, look, what have been NASDAQ 10% corrections in the past you know, five to six years? And there's been you know, a series of them. I've kind of grayed out the ones that became complete bear markets. And we can see here that there's basically one, two, three, four, and we're kind of in our fifth correction of 10% or more. And just how many days from the low did we actually make it back up to a new high? And doing this analysis a couple of weeks ago, um, we said, you know, there was a couple of scenarios here. Um, we could actually you know, move quickly to new highs. And the fastest um, component of that would be getting to new highs within 32 days, which was consistent with uh, the correction uh, from last year. Um, but we also said we could digest and go sideways for a while. And maybe it takes some time uh, to get to new highs, which using an average of these numbers was going to put us somewhere around the middle of October. And then we also two weeks ago said a scenario is the red line that we were going to come back and have a double dip. And that seems to be where things are shaping up, that we're going to double dip and we're going to retest the lows. Now, a couple of these corrections we noted were double dip type corrections. So let's take a look at those. So here we are, the September 2020 correction with 12.8%. You can see we had a very fast recovery to old highs, similar to our move off the August lows. But here's the double dip. We came all the way back down, looked like we gave away maybe 50 to 60% of the gains before the market got its footing, came back up. We had another little uh, pullback before we tightened up and eventually broke out 45 days from the first low. And we also had a similar type action in the March 2021 correction, 12.5%. You can see here we came up and we had a, a retest of the lows and it took even more time for the index to gather itself. We actually had a third dip. Um, there were higher lows, but there were definitely frustrations going on. If you recall, March and April of 2021, it was when growth stocks really started to top out and cyclicals took the uh, leadership. So it took 75 days from the low to get to new highs. So these corrections can be helpful in just understanding the scenarios. Now let's just touch upon sentiment. I've called out the individual investor sentiment survey, um, which was done on September 4th. And you can notice here that um, interestingly enough, in August, August 21, August 28th, and, and September 4th, Pretty bullish readings. And this is after the panic scare on August 5th. So it's interesting. Retail investors have kind of really jumped right back into the market. They're very bullish. They haven't really uh, uh, taken the August, that blip. Um, didn't give them a lot of fear. They got right back in. We did have a fast recovery to high. So it can be convincing that um, it's time to be back in the market. So, and these numbers historically over 50, you can see the historic average is to have about 37.5% bulls. So, and the highest we've had is 52.9 going back to last December. So these are bullish. So usually the individual investor is wrong. And um, you can see today we've had this week a real sharp correction. Be interesting to see what sentiment does next week. And sentiment, just remember, sentiment is really um, kind of a tertiary uh, indicator. I would never trade off it only looking at sentiment, but it does help to see what the uh, if there are extremes in the market that you can you know, corroborate with some price action and volume. Here's the equity put call ratio. Got the NASDAQ as the red line in the upper pane. Here's the put call ratio. Here was the low, the first low we had in the NASDAQ on August 5th. You can see we did get some fear, 
but um, you know, above this green line, but it wasn't the kind of fear we've had at other bottoms. And I had questioned it um, a couple of times in early August to say, is this enough to really, really reset the market? And uh, we, you know, we had a little rally, a fast rally, um, but now that we're starting to correct again with the double dip scenario, you can see that fear is picking up. We're not into anywhere near extreme yet, um, but it's definitely starting to pick up. I know the VIX um, has spiked today as well. Now, amidst all of this, we're in an election year. So this chart is from All Star Charts, and it's looking at the S&P 500 during a, the election uh, cycle. So just to give you some orientation here, the red line is the S&P this year, um, and now it's starting to turn down. But you'll notice in general, this is basically September and October in election years. And you can see that the bias certainly is down. This shows um, all election years, the last 10 year elections, and the gray line is the last five years elections. And you can see the last five years have been the harshest declines um, in the S&P before elections. So certainly a downward bias, um, but we don't know. You know, anything could happen. Maybe something is an outlier this year, but, um, you know, we just take it as it, as it comes. But uh, it's definitely in the back of your mind is, um, you know, could we have some more downward pressure into October? So I wanted to move on to a little bit of education, and I'm calling this psychology in a base. This is actually a slide from uh, one of the courses within my memberships, and it's when we look at analyzing bases. And so let's just take you through here. Um, basically, when you get a nice uptrend and you get to a later stage base, um, there's a certain psychology. People think the stock is really, really strong. It's had lots of gains and you get a very loose, sloppy base, late stage. And what happens is, you know, when it breaks out, you're, if you're later in a cycle or a bull move or a bull leg, you know, people want to load up because they say, wow. And for instance, you could compare this to the semiconductors. Semiconductors have been the tech trade along with NVIDIA. So you could say when the semiconductors had their last move up, Everybody who didn't buy the semiconductors all year says, this is my chance. I'm going to load up on the semiconductors because that's kind of obvious. And then what happens is when we start to fail, you get this quick failure. And unfortunately, people get kind of frozen. They say, well, wait a minute. This was the big leader. Isn't it going to go up? I'm not selling. I'm going to, I'm going to just hope for a little bit of a recovery here because all my friends made a ton of money on the semiconductors this year. And unfortunately, things get worse. They have a weak rally. And um, as the rally comes back up, they say, okay, maybe maybe I'm going to be okay. Um, but then it turns down and there's another leg down. And now they're really in trouble because after a deeper decline, um, their mindset is completely changed. They're really in panic mode saying, look, oh my God, I forgot, I'm trapped. I'm a trapped buyer now. I can't sell now because I'm stuck holding uh, the semiconductors and um, I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to have to wait. And I'm going to probably wait it out until it gets back to break even. Very common mindset when you get trapped in a fast decline. And the semiconductors have had a fast decline with a lot of distribution. Eventually, the market starts to bottom out. There'll be some bottom fishers in the, in the lows of the base trying to play the stock for sh uh, quick, short gains. And eventually, a stock will come back up the right side. Um, as it comes up the right side and gets close to these old highs, you get this zone. I call it the you know, overhead supply zone. This is where there's all these trapped buyers that got caught in this cascading move down are looking to get out. They say, I finally have a chance to get out of this stock at break even. So they all become sellers. So the rally kind of pauses. There's a lot of selling going on because there's trapped buyers who are selling their stock. And it usually creates some sort of base formation over on the right side. Eventually, it'll start to uh, find an imbalance of accumulation where the stock eventually will move out. How long this period takes? It could take weeks, it could take months, and in some cases could take years. So this is very similar kind of a, a psychology that goes on in a base. So if we look at the semiconductors, because I just mentioned them, the, the semiconductors had this little cup base and had a breakout and it immediately failed. And there's this cascading decline that traps all these buyers. 
and the and the uh, semiconductor SMH was down 29% in only like two weeks. So very, very quick, trapped a lot of people that bought up in this range here. And then we had a little rally. So we had a rally here that came into a declining 50-day moving average, which acted as resistance. And you can see the rally was very, very weak. The price action looked good, but the volume was really pathetic, became very, very weak and low. So you have this psychology that's going on in this in this base. You know, if you made a lot of money on the semiconductors rising this year, that's excellent. I'm glad you nailed it. But there's a tendency to have recency bias. And recency bias will have you thinking, well, I made a lot of money in the semiconductors. I want to go back to the well for more. So you're looking for a way to buy this because you think they've been good to me before and I want to go back and make more money from them. So that's certainly embedded in the chart. Now, if you were somebody that missed the semiconductors, you missed the move and now it was obvious and you want to get back on board. Again, trapped buyers. And the third thing was a psychology mindset is I was late. I bought near the top and I was waiting. And now I'm waiting to sell on a rebound. These trapped buyers become sellers. So for those of you that nailed it, you know, easy money can sometimes turn into hard losses. You know, if you had great gains and then you decided to really load up your account on this little move higher and you weren't nimble and you didn't cut your losses quick, you wrote it down. It's possible that you gave back a lot of your gains, but at least you can look at it and try to learn something and try to make sure that you're looking for sell signals and try to be more balanced and not be affected by recency bias. So translating this to NVIDIA, obviously the king stock in the market this year and being a semiconductor, you know, but NVIDIA since early June in these videos, I've been pointing out sell signals were cropping up all over the place, even with the great stock such as NVIDIA. You know, we had the upper channel line break in early June. We had a 10 for one split, which is really excessive. And then we also had this period here where we went to brand new highs for five days in a row, I think it was, and it was on extremely low volume. That's a sell signal. That's an offensive sell signal. The upper channel line break is an offensive sell signal. And then the stock reversed. Stock reversed, tried to make a rally, reversed again. And then we came down into the August lows. And then we had another rally. The volume was kind of mediocre. And you can see now the chart is being dominated by red spikes. One, two, three, four red spikes. And just, uh, I think it was Tuesday, we had the largest one-day point drop in the NVIDIA stock. And the largest one-day point drop is a defensive sell signal. So now we're below the 50-day. We've had a break of the 50-day. So um, the 10-week moving average, is this a 10-week moving average break where you should sell? Or is it a 10-week moving average break where you should continue to hold? Um, that all depends on your rules. Um, I talk about uh, I have a whole video on my 10-week moving average rules that goes in the Cloudburst series. Um, I'll share all my rules and of how I would approach that, but you need to evaluate that. So distribution is continuing in uh, the leader. And what's interesting is, you know, people will look at you and say, well, geez, the fundamentals for NVIDIA are absolutely great. And they are. They look great. All big winning stocks, when they top out, have great fundamentals. And I just did a GMU extra about two weeks ago called Selling on the Technicals. So if you go to my YouTube, which is Rain King LLC, go to the YouTube channel. This video is there for you to, to watch. It's all about why we sell on technicals and that fundamentals are not going to get you out of the stock in time to avoid these kinds of drawdowns. So I encourage you to watch that. It's about a 10, 12 minute video, probably pretty helpful. So the leadership in the market, I just wanted to uh, update everyone. This was the breakouts that we had as of yesterday. Um, we, we've been tracking these. These are the four weeks before the follow through day that we got. And then things looked really good. We had some good breath thrusts in here and more stocks were breaking out. So it looked pretty good, but obviously things have changed this week and we have to be much more cautious, much more defensive. But these are the breakouts. These are the leading stocks. So it might be all of these names, frankly, you should take a look at as your watch list and see what um, you see in terms of the strength or weaknesses in these names. 
Now, I'm just going to go over, I think, four names that I think right now are probably the strongest names in the market. First one is Mercado Libre. Um, this one, Melly, has been really, really strong. It broke out before the follow-through day, had this very powerful breakout with lots of volume. And you can see here that as the market was kind of digesting, this stock barely came back. It wouldn't give anything. And now it's even the, with the weight of the market pulling everything down, it still had a very gentle pullback into the 20 EMA. So, and we don't see any huge red bars, so we don't see massive selling. So it's still holding up well. I wouldn't be surprised if it continues to get dragged down if the general market continues with a retest of the lows. But I do think it's one of the strongest stocks in the market right now. Very strong RS line. Next one is Tesla. This was on the actionable list for my Rain King members. We actually bought the stock in this downtrend line entry here uh, this week. And it had a nice follow through day yesterday. But today with the news, it's gotten kind of slammed back. So we'll have to see how it turns out. We had a secondary buy point somewhere around the high volume recovery, which is this zone in here um, that, you know, really for most people, it's kind of invisible on the chart. But I think the chart looks pretty good. It had a nice solid base over here with a lot of tightness and some accumulation going on, strong breakout. And then we had the August lows with a shakeout below the pivot. And then it kind of has been recovering. So, you know, we're hoping that, uh, Tesla will have the relative strength to kind of build out the right side of the base. So I do think it's one of the stronger names in the market, um, but we'll have to see how the general market affects everything. The other two that I think are very strong are Rocket Companies, RKT. Again, very strong breakout, big volume spikes, and we've had this little pullback near the purple line, which is the 20. So we took Ranking members, um, we took a pullback entry here. Um, it started to get going, but the weight of the market is just not letting it lift. And you can see here that it's pulling back. So it's um, slightly below break even, I think, as we speak. So we'll have to see how this trade plays out. Um, but it was a pullback entry. And the fourth one that I wanted to highlight is GE Vernova, GEV. I think this is also one of the strongest names in the market right now. The RS line is strong. Um, we broke out of this fair, a little bit of a sloppy uh, sloppy base formation, not the best, but what was probably positive was right around the pivot, it started to tighten up, had a little shakeout, tightened up, and then we got a nice clean breakout with some volume. Um, and it's so far uh, kind of holding gains amidst the market pulling in. So it's still acting well. The things that are attractive about GE Vernova, this, this makes energy electricity division. They also have a renewable wind division and they also have a small nuclear group product as well. But it's a new issue. As GE broke into three pieces, um, this is one of the pieces. So it's a new issue came out in April. It has big liquidity. This is a $55 billion uh, company. And as I mentioned before, the chart is looking pretty constructive. So institutions are typically attracted to big liquid stocks that have growth ahead of them. And the forecasts for GE Vernova show good earnings and sales are ahead. So if you like uh, some of these analysis of charts, you wanna see my full list of uh, watch list names, and you wanna see actionable setups, you know, join Rain King Insights at the Rain King membership level. Some other names I think you might want to keep your eye on are Kava, U, MRX, Toast, Redfin, and Argenix. So that's a biotech. So some other names for your watch list to help give you some leads. Okay, so let's try to summarize. So where are we? Well, the market is now in a position where it's going to look like we're going to retest the lows. We don't know how close we'll get, but we're certainly in the process of retesting the lows. We've been below the 20-day moving average on the NASDAQ and the S&P for four days. Usually uh, three days below is a change of trend. So four days is confirmed. We're in a change of trend to down in the short term. New highs and new lows. The S&P is still in new highs, uh, but the NASDAQ has been in new lows for the last couple of days. So that's weak, weaker. And the leading stocks. There are some leading stocks that are showing RS. They're trying to hold on, but again, the weight of the market is pulling things back. And as I mentioned before, the NASDAQ had a cluster of four distribution days 
within eight days. So that cluster is uh, definitely a signal that could be defensive, defensive, defensive. Um, and you know, we noted that on Tuesday and things have uh, deteriorated since. Exposure levels, I've reduced them to 30 to 40%, knocked them down. I think it's really important to watch your open risk. And if you have profits, how much of those profits are you willing to uh, potentially give back? So watch where you're placing your stops. Another technique is in a situation where the market's been a little choppy is if you have small gainers, and I say anything that's like one to 5%, and you have some small losers that are down one to 5%, a technique that I tend to use is I will actually just, when I want to reduce my exposure to the market, I want to get some positions off uh, the market. I will take my small gainers for two, three, four percent and match them up um, with some of my small losers at two, three, four percent. And basically they just wash each other out. But the, but the reason for doing it is if I was at 60 percent exposure, I'll bring my exposure down to, say, 30 percent. And these just cancel each other out. So my portfolio stays um, hasn't doesn't have a drawdown. Um, if you wait too long and small gainers become losers and the losers become bigger, then you're looking at a drawdown. So it's just a technique you might want to consider. The quote of the week. I posted this on my X feed. A technical trader and a fundamental trader were out to dinner and a sharp knife fell off the table. The technical trader moved his foot, but the fundamental trader was stabbed and bled profusely. When the technical guy asked the fundamental guy why he didn't move his foot, the fundamental trader replied, I thought it was going back up. So the market is moving down. When it's moving down, we need to get defensive. <clears throat> Again, don't get rigid. Make sure you're open and flexible, watching your stops. And if you need to take losses, then you should definitely take those losses to protect your overall portfolio. So this is a free video. For those of you who have not checked out Rain King Insights, please give it a look. A lot of material there. And we'd love to have you join and get some more coaching, education about the markets. And if you're interested in watch lists and more actionable stuff, you can look at the Rain King membership level. Okay, everybody, that's Friday, September 6th. It's been a turbulent day in the markets, but that's the general market update. We'll see you all next month.